2 Kings chapter 12. In the seventh year of Jehu, north, Jehosh began to reign, and forty years, number of testing, reigned he in Jerusalem, south, and his mother's name was Zeba of Beersheba. Now, Beersheba is a great place in the Bible. That's down south. That's where the angel of the Lord met Hagar. That's where Abraham digged the well. And Jehosh did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All his days wherein Jediah the priest instructed him. So here is the young man. He's been hid from Athaliah. He's been hid in the house of the Lord. He's been instructed. He's been brought up. For seven years, verse 21 of chapter uh, 11, by Jeho Jehoiada, and he's been doing a great job raising this young man. He's had the guidance of the priests. So, you have a spiritual instruction, but the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. All right, we talked about in chapter 11, we got this church state. And yet, look, here is still the freedom. Here is still the, all right, you want, you want to serve another God? Go ahead. Now, we're not told if it's done secretly, but yet the Holy Spirit knows what's going on. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Now, whether Jehoiada and the king knew that, and this is a side remark by the Holy Spirit, but it's not been approved by the king, it's not been approved by the priest, because we just got rid of Baal and his worship. And these high places is, is you're going to get to God like they did in Genesis on your own merit. This is where you build the steeples. This is where you build the pyramids. This is where you try to get to God on your own work. Spaceships and spacecraft. And Jehash, Jehash said to the priest, not the high priest, to the priest, all the money of the dedicated thing that is brought into the house of the Lord, even the money of everyone that passes the account, the account that's the first time that word shows up, account, that watch the terminology of accounting show up in the King James Bible. Now we look up the last night, we saw the word ranges, how you got to go to the shooting range in the Bible. Now we're going to see a county. The money that every man is set at. And all the money that cometh into a, any man's heart to bring. So here's an offering. Not the tithes by the law. Not that what passes the rod under the law. Not every tenth. This is the money that man says in his heart, you know what, I just want to give extra to God. To bring to the house of the Lord. It's a free will offering. There's no force. There's no, every time you see him, oh, we need money. It's not an 800 number, we need money. It's not a plea. If the people came and gave money of their own will, let the priest take it to them. Every man of his acquaintance, that's the first time that word shows up. And let them repair the breaches of the house. Oh, well, look at that. Here is the temple built by Solomon. It is God's house. All right. Why is it breaking down? Why are there holes? Why are things cracking? Because nothing on this earth lasts. Now there's a temple in heaven when you read the book of Revelation. None of that breaks down. None of that needs repairing. You got a house in God in Jerusalem and there's breaches, there's holes. Missing bricks, missing tiles. Things are breaking. That's what this world has. I'm going to a place that no one, no one will need to fix any breaches. No one will need to repair nothing in glory. Wheresoever any breach shall be found. Alright, so the temple's got breaches, got holes. 
It's designated fun. But they're not going to go where they're supposed to go. Watch. But it was so that in the 30th and 20th year of King Jehoash, he serves 40 years, so it's over half of his reign. Half of his reign would have been 20 years. It's the, it's the 23rd year of King Jehoash. The priests had not repaired the breaches of the house. Why is it taking them almost over half of his reign to... Uh, that was broken last year and ain't fixed yet. That was, that was a big piece missing there. That, that's a new piece. Taking over half of his reign. Then King Jehoash called for Je Jehoda, the priest, that's the high priest, the one in charge, and the other priest, and said unto them, why repair ye not the breaches of the house? Now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. Stop taking money for yourself, boys. People are giving money, the king says, in the note on the check. This is to be designated to the breaches, and they have not been putting the money to where it's supposed to be going. This is a free will offering that God is pleased with. But the ministers of the house of the Lord are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the priest consented, that's the first time that word shows up, to receive no more money of the people. Neither to repair the breaches of the house. All right, fine, we won't take no money. Look what's going on in the house of God. You have a high priest who's doing right. He's got a man that's on the throne doing right. And yet the servicemen, if I can say that, of the temple, they're, they're taking the money, they're not using the money. And then you get preached, oh, in the churches and all that, people mishandle the money. It's in the Bible. It was in the temple. And they got to the point, we're not going to receive no money then. They have an attitude. Fine, if I can't do it right, I ain't going to do it at all. And that's a sin. But Jehoiada, the priest, now this is the high priest. And I can't understand what Jehoash and Jehoiada are doing that they don't see what's going on here. I mean, don't they go to the temple? Is this not the high priest? Supposed to go at least twice into the holy place once you they can't see what's what's going on here. Why are these priests not doing right as Eli's sons had not done right? So Jehoiada, this is the high priest, the priest took a chest. That's the first time that is in the Bible. And board, that's the only time you see that in the Bible. A hole in the lid, that's the only time that word shows up in the Bible. So he doesn't make a piggy bank, because pigs are unclean. With a hole in the in the in the back of the pig, he takes a chest, he puts a hole in the in the lid of that chest, of it, and set it behind besides the altar. That's the brazen altar. That's where everybody meets at the entrance. The right side. So right side, that would be east to west. So it would be on the north side. As one cometh into the house of the Lord. So when you're going to come, you're bringing your offerings to the house of the Lord. There's an added thing now in the tabernacle or the temple, which God never prescribed. If you look north, you look to the right, here's this chest with a hole in it. As one cometh into the house of the Lord, and the priest that kept the door, would be today would be your ushers put therein all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord so they walk over and put it through the hole and it was so when they saw that there was much money in the chest I believe Mopoli calls it community chest that the king's scribe this is the one that records this is probably the one who's writing what we're reading right now, most likely. And the high priest came up 
and they put up in bags, money bags. That's where money bags come from. And told the money. What's that? That's going to the bank and seeing the teller. That's your word for teller in the Bible. A teller at the bank and money bag. Accounting. It's all in the Bible. A teller will tell you how much you have. A teller will tell you how much is in the bank. And told the money that was found in the house of the Lord. You go to the bank and say, how much I got in my savings account? And they will tell you. They will told you. And if you need a lot of money, they'll put it in bags for you. If you go in the bank and you steal money, they'll put it in a bag for you. And sometimes if you open up that bag, you'll get a little die bomb. Comes out of the Bible. And they gave the money being told into the hands in the hands of them that did the work. Here's your building fund for repairing the building. That had the oversight of the house of the Lord. Now here is people that are in charge of this specific money for one specific reason. To fix the house. All the things that are breaking. And they laid it out to the carpenters. So you had woodwork needed to be done. To the builders. Construction. That wrought upon the house of the Lord. So here is money given by the people willingly so they can fix what's wrong with the house. To masons, there's your stonework. And I've been told that here and back when Solomon builds the temple itself, I have been told by a mason that that's the mason people right there. It is not. That's not the mason secret organization. That's masons who do brickwork, that do stonework, that work in uh, um, cement blocks. It ain't a secret organization. And hewers of stone, they would cut the stone. They work right along with the masons. To buy timber, they'd be working for the carpenters or scaffolding. And hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of the Lord. And for all that was laid out for the house to be repaired it. So here's the money. Here's the building fund. The house of the Lord is being repaired under Jehoash. It's been, it's been a while since it's been built by Solomon. And we have not read the house. It's, it's been in dis disrepair. And now it's coming alive again. How be it? There were not made for the house of the Lord bowls of silver, snuffers, that works with the candles, basins, that's bowls, trumpets, and any vessels of gold or vessels of silver of the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen. So the money we're talking about here didn't go for the equipment of the temple. The money we're talking about in chapter 12, it went for the building program. You would write on the check, building program. This is not for incense. This is not for bowls. This is not to get new sufferers or get oil. It's for building. But they gave it to the workmen and repaired with, within the house of the Lord. The bills are being paid. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men into whose hands they delivered the money to be bestowed on workmen, for they dwelt faithfully. That's the first time that word shows up. And you've got Christians today that are Christians. They profess to be Christians, and their business is deceitfulness, unfaithfulness. What this verse is saying right here, that money that went into the house of the Lord, they didn't there was no accounting for it. There was no, all right, this receipt here, where is the material? When they said they bought eight planks, there was eight planks. When we bought 20 stones, there was 20 stones. There was no thievery. There was no deceitfulness. They were honest in dealing with their work. Try to find somebody like that today. The trespass money. 
And this will be Leviticus 5. The sin money was not brought into the house of the Lord. That money was not used to fix the house. It was the priest. Leviticus 7, 7. All right. Next thing in history. We'll go back through all this when we get to Second Chronicles, Lord willing. Then Haziel, this is the one that was prophesied. He's going to destroy the Jews. He killed his master, Ben-Hadad. Then Hazel, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. And Hazel set his face to go up to Jerusalem. I'm going to go battle Jerusalem. And Jehoaz, king of Judah, took all the hallowed, hall, hall, uh, holy, hallowed, holy, hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name, things that Jehoshaphat, grandfather, and Jehoram, great-grandfather, uh, great grandfather, and Azahiah, father, his father's, now see, his father's, a grandfather can be a father. People have trouble with that. There's no trouble. Kings of Judah had dedicated. So here are kings. They had dedicated things to God. And his own hallow things. And all the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of the Lord, which belongs to God. He went into the room that had the treasures. In the king's house, his own house. And sent it to Hazel, king of Syria. And he went away from Jerusalem. He's taking what belonged to God. And he's paying a heathen king. Who has no love of God. Who has nothing to do with God. Here take God's things and get away from me. Okay bye. That's a sin. He has not. Jehoash has not relied 100% on God. He has not prayed to God. And said God here comes the enemy. I need help. Under the law Lord. Didn't you just see what we did with it. We're, we're fixing your house. I'm trying to do right. I've got your priest. They're, they're trying to get me. I'm trying to get these priests back in order. Lord God, I need your help. And God would probably no. break into the house of the Lord. Break into the treasury. Break into the bank. Wherever they kept the money in the king's house. In the Lord's house. And he pays off the enemy of God. He's going to be rebuked for that. And the rest of the acts of Joash. He's also called Jehoash. He's a king that has two names. Two spellings. And all that he did are they not written in the book of the Chronicles. Which we'll get to. Of the kings of Judah. Now look. Chronicles. Is a written book of Judah. Kings is written book of Israel. Though you will have both kings in there. Kings points specifically to north. Chronicles will point specifically to to the south. And his servants arose. And made a conspiracy. That's not good. And slew Joash in the house of Milo. Which goeth down to Selah. For jo Joseker. The son of Shameth. And Jehoshbad. The son of Shomer. His servants. Look at that. God names them. He names them. Paul names the enemies of the church. You ought never call out people's names. The Bible does. So it's always, you ought call out names. That's not, you haven't read your Bible. Shut up. Go home. Open up your Bible and start reading from Genesis to Revelation. Jude does it. Smote him. And he died. And they buried him with the, with his fathers in the city of David, which they're now, they have found, and they're now exploring, and they're digging up the city of David, and they're, they're going to find a wealth, a wealth of inside of the archaeology working with the city of David now. But they're not going to publish it at all. Because all that archaeology of the city of David is going to point you right back to the Bible, and we can't do that. And Amaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. So this is another point in history. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
all that are in the ministry don't do right. And it's funny because you got people go to church and their pastor, he never sins. And they put him on a pedestal and kick God off. And the pastor will be in churches. Oh, I got a faithful group of people. My Sunday school guy. They would not teach anybody wrong. And they do. And they are. I know that for a fact. There are people that are under a pastor or teaching the congregation wrong. And they do. Oh, what a faithful group of people we have. In our, and they're not faithful. First King, I mean, Second Kings chapter 12. Here's the ministry. Here's the Levites. And they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And it involves money. And that happens today. And then here's a king. He's doing right. And he puts his riches and his faith in money. Christians do that too. Under the law, God would have to help Jehoash because Jehoash has done good work. And then what he gets in return, he ends up dead. An early death. Slain by his own servant. 